the worst thing you can ever do. A uh, person makes some nice, wonderful foodstuffs and then offers them to Krishna, and then uh, uh, and the smell is so delicious, and you're in the mood, and he puts down the plate, and all you do is dive in. No diving, okay? First you look and you relish it. Wow, Krishna is so kind to me. He's giving me this wonderful prasadam. Did I deserve this? What did I do? I, did, I made so many mistakes and so many oversights and so much indifference and so much apathy in my life. And, and still, look what he's given. Wow. So you can look at it and, 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 and let, it, let your eyes eat it first, okay? And then you look at it and you, you, you savor it. And then you get a little closer and let the fragrance get into your nostrils. So you build up a delight so that when that first mouthful goes down, it's really a delicious mouthful. As Mataji, I'm staying with them. They can see pretty much what I do. I, I look at it, and, I, and then when I taste it, it's so, it's, so, it's so good. And that's due to Krishna's mercy. Food tastes better with Krishna. That's like a, like a, a commercial in the spiritual world. <laughs> Food tastes better with Krishna. 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 It's better than the Coca-Cola. It's not Coca-Cola. <laughs> this will get you somewhere. Coke will just make you a drug addict. So, <laughs> so we have better, we can do better than they can do. And I'm very grateful that you're all so receptive. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so, so I mentioned the nine forms of devotional service. All nine methods are bona fide methods. In other words, they are uh, followed by our sampradaya. Sampradaya is a disciplic succession. Does everybody know here what a disciplic succession? Raise your hand or raise your hand or nod your head. So, because I don't want to go on if you don't know what it means, and I can define it in just a few seconds. Everybody knows the disciplic succession? Yeah? Okay, then we'll go. Just in a few words, the, the disciplic succession is, is just what it says. It's a succession of individuals, just like a king. He has a son, and that son has a son, and that son has a son. So the king, when he leaves his body, it, the, the kingdom goes to the son, because he succeeds the king. And when the successor, uh, when he either gets too old or he cannot rule anymore, then his son succeeds. So succession means that which comes after. So we have a line of disciplic succession which goes all the way back to Krishna. So it starts with Krishna, and then we have uh, from Krishna, we have uh, Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma, we go to Narada Muni, and uh, Narada Muni uh, it goes to Vyasadeva, and Vyasadeva, who Shukadeva Goswami, and on and on. So they are the disciplic succession, and they are, this was an important, uh, they are bona fide. Bona fide means they've received it from essentially the Lord, because each succession was presenting or offering what they themselves had heard without any uh, changes, without any deviation, without any uh, additions, without any subtractions, just what Krishna wanted us to know, and it, uh, it comes that way. That's what a bona fide spiritual master is. I try my best to uh, follow exactly what Srila Prabhupada has given us. So, uh, uh, but out of all, yeah, let me, all nine methods are bona fide methods, and either all of them some of them, or even one of them, can bring about the desired result for the sincere devotee. But out of all the nine different methods, the first one, namely hearing, is the most important function in the process of bhakti yoga. I'm going to go, I prefer to do a little explaining along the way rather than going through reading this and then having to come back and do the same thing. I can explain it as I go along, uh, rather than just waste the time doing it all over. So, because this is so important. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, out of the nine different methods, the first one, namely hearing, is the most important function in the process of bhakti yoga. 
So one may ask, why is it the most important function? Uh, I mean, but Prabhupada says, he explains here, but they're all important. And if you were to take up any one of them, hearing, chanting, remembering, also the result of self-realization and God-realization will similarly occur. But in this age of Kali, hearing is most recommended. Now, I, I will get into it. First of all, when you read the print, like so, uh, you read it and you understand it, but it does not make a very firm impression because you're seeing it with your eyes and you're hearing it with your mind. And your mind is very subtle. It's not gross. It's not like you heard a sound. But when I did this, nobody heard it because it was too subtle. It was unhearable. So uh, when we, let me say, preface this. For those of you who would like to read a little more about this, in the book, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, in the seventh chapter <coughs> of the Krishna book, as I just mentioned, he takes about three pages, three pages, to explain why hearing is so important. And uh, the first thing, it's, it's just a very Ill, uh, clear, uh, figurative uh, explanation is enough. If you had some wet mud, you know, on the floor here, and I take a feather, okay, and I take the feather and I drop it on the mud, okay, you let it sit there for five minutes, and then you pick up the feather, how much of an impression do you think it's going to make? Not much. It's a feather. It has hardly any weight. So then you take a, uh, you take a stone, okay, about so big. Maybe it weighs five, six ounces. You take the stone and you drop it in the mud. And you wait a little while. Then you pick it up and it's got a hole in the mud now. Okay? Same thing with the mind. When you just read it, that's called feather impression. Mm -hmm. Because it's all light. Unless you, one reads, ment I'm talking only mental reading, uh, hearing media reading, when you hear it out loud, that's the same as chanting and hearing, which is fine. But just reading with the eyes and the mind, it doesn't make the impression. And it's, unless a person has a super memory, he doesn't remember things as easily as he would when a firm impression is made. Uh, children are very impressionable because they know in order to get around in the house and to get all the favors, you know, all the ice cream and chocolate cake and pizza that they want, uh, they're going to have to ask it in, in, in uh, English words or if they're in Montreal and Canadian words or wherever they happen to be. <clears throat> so, therefore, the idea behind it is to make certain that a very firm impression goes into the mind. So, as Sri Prabhupada says right here, without hearing sufficiently and properly, uh, <clears throat> no one, I'm going to read that again, without hearing sufficiently and properly, no one can make any progress by any of the methods of practice. So Prabhupada says that even if you want to get involved with some of the others, hearing, chanting, or remembering, or uh, serving the lotus feet, still one should hear the instruction from a creditable or bona fide uh, person who has received it in disciplic succession. And from a person who really loves what he or she is doing, and not really doing it, simply to think or feel or, or imagine or show off that he or she is very spiritual. Oh, I did this. And sometimes people, they come to me and they say, Maharaj, <clears throat> guess what? Uh, what, what, what? What should I guess? <laughs> so, <laughs> so he says, I'm doing six, 64 rounds now. I said, well, that's a very, very commendable. And anything else? He's expecting a little more than that. You know, 64 rounds. Uh, let me say this, is that, uh, why are you even telling me? What, what am I going to do? Get you into a, a 98 rounds? <laughs> what, what's the whole point of telling me? He said, well, I thought you would like it. I do like it, and that's why I said it's commendable. But uh, no need to uh, get into a bragging section. Better, you, you don't tell me, you tell me, which means you want me to honor you. 
You want me to glorify you. You want me to think of you as a very uh, up-and-coming devotee. And that's what you should not be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay? All you should be doing is, the way to approach, for example, a sannyasi or spiritual master. And if you want to share that, there's a nice way to do it, my dear. Uh, first, you offer your obeisances. And I want to let you know uh, that I have done something which uh, I'm proud of and which I'm very grateful to you for because I don't feel I would have done this if you hadn't inspired me, if you haven't uh, uh, encouraged me. So I want to share it because you are, are in, in effect, the person who has helped me accomplish it. So I'm giving all credit to you and Krishna. So uh, by now I'm really in suspense. You know, well, 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 what did you do? He said, well, it was difficult, it was rough, it was tough. And I worked, and wh come on, what is it now? <laughs> <laughs> the guy's a good storyteller, <laughs> you know. So it was rough, it was difficult. I say, okay, enough with the smorgasbord. Let's get right into what it is, what you did. He said, I chanted 64 rounds this week. I said, really? Well, you're doing better than I am, now, that's for sure. He said, well, that wasn't the idea of me telling you. I wasn't trying to say that I'm better than you. That, 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 that. But I wanted to tell you that you were very responsible for this, and I felt at the end of the 64 rounds so enlivened, so uplifted, uh, so enthused, that uh, I just wanted to tell everybody about Krishna. I said, that makes me really happy. So I'm glad to hear your realization and the result of your chanting. So please continue doing that, but don't tell too many people because it will be an ego joint, and I don't want that either. But that you tell the right people who will appreciate it, and basically you set it as a means of crediting that person, uh, and that, that makes it all the more uh, valuable and worthwhile. And it's not an ego joint, it's basically a sharing experience. And that's really what we're really about, sharing with each other, and encouraging each other, and enthusing each other. The more we do that for one another, the more we feel at one with one another. The oneness is oneness of love. Sharing means being concerned about another person's needs, another person's wants, another person's uh, requirements.